today the question is zombies or vampires I'm gonna review my budget zombies deck it's mono black it works pretty good uh, but I also like vampires they give you a pretty healthy collection of vampires in your starting collection that works out pretty good but today's video is gonna be all about the zombies uh, which I like zombies are kind of fun especially if you don't want to do a whole lot of thinking they just kind of play themselves uh, and you go to town on them uh, don't forget to subscribe I'm at 29,000 gold so far 6,500 gold away from doing the big uh, the big opening, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, let's take a look first at the deck, and we'll see what I've put together, and then uh, I'll play a few games with it, and we'll see how it plays out. Three of the Diagraph Ghoul. This is a one-casting 2-2. Two -two. When Diagraph Ghoul enters the battlefield, it is tapped, always. So if you retrieve it from the graveyard with... Uh, there's nothing that'll retrieve it from the graveyard in this deck and put it into the battlefield, um, but if you had that, it would be tapped. Uh, Doomed Dissenter is a 2-casting 1-1, one, one, and when it dies, it creates a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. This ends up being super sticky. Nobody ever blocks a Doomed Dissenter. Uh, there's four of those in the deck. Four Reassembling Skeletons. It's a 2-casting 1-1. One, one. At any time, you can pay two and return it to the battlefield. Tapped. Oh, from your graveyard. Uh, this works pretty well, even if you discard it, too. It's pretty cool. Uh, costly Plunder is a two-casting draw two cards. Uh, as an additional cost, you have to sacrifice a creature or an artifact, but there are no artifacts in the deck, so it's just a creature. Uh, works really good with Reassembling Skeleton uh, and also Doom to Center, because then you get the 2-2 two, two, and you get to draw cards all for two. And then I also threw in Macabre Waltz. I love the... Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that ad that's floating around there where... Say hi to Gus. Where... Um, it's Liliana, and she's dancing with the corpse, and it's this card. It's animated. It's pretty cool. Uh, one of my favorite ads for a game. It's pretty funny. Um, but for two, you can return two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand and then discard a card. Uh, so that works pretty good if you have, like, a reassembling skeleton in your in your graveyard and you want to get, uh, like, Josu Vest back out. You can Macabre Waltz, get both of them, and then just discard the skeleton and pay two black later on and get it back on the battlefield. <clears throat> Ravenous Harpy serves as a pseudo-kill card. Uh, for three, you get a 1-2 flyer. You pay one, sacrifice another creature, and put a counter on the Ravenous Harpy. With all of this reassemblance, uh, this works out pretty good. Uh, Death Baron is a three-casting 2-2. Two -two. They only give you two in the collection. To upgrade a deck like this, you would add more Death Barons, which, which you could do. Um, but I'm not spending wild cards right now. I'm saving them up. So I only have two in the deck. Uh, it gives zombies and skeletons you control, plus one, plus one, and death touch. A lot of people forget about that death touch piece, and you can sneak in and take out some creatures. Works pretty good. Four murders. So the more the merrier. Uh, three casting, destroy target creature. Four grave diggers. When grave digger enters the battlefield, return a creature from your graveyard to your hand. Two infectious horrors. This is a great card. Highly underrated. A little expensive, but highly underrated. Whenever it attacks, each opponent loses two life. You can't stop it, it just happens. And then it's if you got a Death Baron out, like it gets it gets Death Touch also. Pretty good. One Josu Vest, pretty good knight with menace. He's a four five for four. And you could you could kick him late game. I think it's Yeah, it's a total of ten mana. It's gonna be too much. <clears throat> Three ravenous chupacabras. Forecasting creature removal. So when it enters the battlefield. Destroy target creature and opponent controls. Pretty good there. And then two of the open the grave. So for five mana, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token. If you can pull it off, this is a fabulous combo with open the graves, ravenous harpy, and a reassembling skeleton. You just sacrifice the skeleton to the harpy and you make a, a token every time with the open the graves. It works out pretty good. Pretty rare to get that far into a game, though. I mean, honestly, like, most games aren't going to last that long, and if, if that's going to win you the game, you probably would have won anyways. Um, but let's see how this deck plays out. It ends up being... Uh, I mean, honestly, it's hit and miss. Yesterday I was playing against some some guys, and... The, uh... I would never blame the Auto Shuffler for losses. Man. Man, it was rough. It was just... Six lands and a... And a and a grave digger, and then I, and then you mulligan down as no land and it's no land. It was, it was a tough time. So let's see if the uh, the auto shuffler is helping me out. So this is pretty good. Okay, I like this a lot more. Uh, at least I have a turn one play. If I wanted to, I could sacrifice my diagraph ghoul for card draw, but I'm not going to. Hmm. 
Alright, so our opponent's playing at least black and white. And now we've got a loose combo here with the reassembling skeleton and a costly plunder. So it's almost like chart a course, you know, where you've got to attack. I'm going to attack and we're playing against Mill. This will be interesting. <coughs> kind of creatures he's got in here. He's playing black and white, so I'm expecting some pretty good amount of control. Seal away, cast down, murder. No, I'm not really worried about creatures. Possibly plunder as an instant, so we're going to go ahead and attack. And we'll see if he blocks. There's a chance he, I mean, he could block and take no damage. So he's going to block down my skeleton and go for the kill. I'm going to sack him anyways. Alright. This is going to uh, make my death touch super awesome if I can get it out. Goodness sakes, can I get more grave diggers, please? I think there's one more in the deck. Maybe I can grab that. This, this is what's been happening lately, too. You get just, like, loaded up with stuff. This happen? Who's paying attention? So there's no reason to to attack. We can't make a dent just yet. So why don't we drop our skeleton? Make him think we overplay our hand all the time. Hopefully he's analyzing the game to that extent. This is a strange deck. Vampires? Well. Okay, so this looks like a vampire back here. That's kind of cool. Right? Let's take a look at how he handles this. I've got open the graves out, so whenever a non-token creature dies, I get a 2-2 zombie token. Excuse me. Alright, so he's got his death touch out before I've got mine. Although I'm not really worried about death touch too much. Because a lot of my creatures aren't up coming back. If anything, well, I've got a diagraph pool in the graveyard, but I don't think it's worth pulling back out just yet. So we'll go ahead and pass the turn. We could use some of that removal. I've got four murders, I've got three chupacabras. So he put Josu in my graveyard. I think we'll go ahead and grab him. And then we'll attack with Jossu. And uh, and he'll block with his death touch. And then we'll just grab him again. Well, nope. We're going to go ahead and use this murder right now. On the Bishop of Rebirth. I don't want him taking cards out of his graveyard. <clears throat> so with his Bishop of Rebirth, whenever it attacks, he can return a creature card with converted mana plus three or less from the graveyard rights to the battlefield. So I don't want him doing that with any of these other creatures. And we will not attack just yet. We'll hold off. We'll hold off. I don't mind taking ones. That's okay. So I'd like to come after him, drop a Death Baron, and then hit him with some of these little dudes. Who's this guy? Tap three on tap vampires. We'll turn him from his graveyard to his hand. Well, there goes one of my Death Barons, and that's okay. Cool. Let's go ahead and grab him. Take that action. Right. No reason to attack just yet, and then I can throw some some stuff his way next turn.
Oh, he got away with the murder there. Hmm. It's not great. Cool. This is terrific. Okay, so he's gonna have to save some blockers next turn. And he may know that. So if we attack with everything, we just send it his way. It is not lethal. And then he might be able to do some damage to me on the crackback. I mean, these guys fly anyway. So I would like to save just one creature to block. So I'm going to save a skeleton. I'm going to try and make it look like I just misclicked it. Remember, my skeleton has death touch. My doomed dissenters do not have death touch. So if he blocks a dissenter with his neonade, it would work. And my my dissenter wouldn't die. And then he could take the nine damage or whatever. <clears throat> I'm looking at taking five flying anyways. So if that's if that's gonna happen, that's just it's gonna happen. He may be able to buff them enough to really, really cause some damage, but I don't think, I don't think he can kill me next turn. So there's the one blocker that I expected. Mm -mm. This is a terrible move. See, they always forget about death touch. My guy had death touch too. And I get a token, and I get my reassembling skeleton back. So this is absolutely terrific. Let's drop a diagraph. There's a whole lot of tapped creatures, but that's okay. My reassembling so now I've got quite the army of death touch zombies, and they're all benefiting from one death baron. Um, I'd love to have four of those, because they just... That would be overwhelming in every way. But I think I can still sneak in for a bunch, and if I draw one swamp, I could Grave Digger Death Baron and then the game's over. So he's got three blockers. He blocks three two twos. I can still hit him for two, four, six, eight. Let's grab. And you know what we're going to do? I'm going to attack with both my Dissenters. Like I said, <clears throat> they never block a Doom Dissenter. I don't know why. They just don't. Like, he won't block with the Skyblade Legion. He, he won't do it. So I can sneak in for one damage. Whittle my way down a bit more. Let's see what happens. He knows I've got the Death Baron. He could see it. And so if he could see it in my graveyard, the game lets him see it in my hand. It's revealed to him. Menace. Okay, not lifelink. So that'll make victory a lot easier for me. Five. This is going to be six if he attacks. He might think he needs to save him as blockers, though they won't do him any good. Because I'll still sneak through for lethal next turn. That's one turn. Not going to do it. Cool. Yep. Can't do anything about flying. Good play. Yeah. So let's do a little, little death baron. And we'll just go all, all face. Right, he's got three blockers. Yeah, this is game. There you have it, the zombies, you know, like I said, they play themselves, you just kind of drop them and turn them sideways, and I waited till I had the Death Baron out there, but even, even those three blockers... And you get all these cards, they hand them to you in the collection, so you could, you could pretty much make this deck on, on day one, maybe, maybe day six, you might have to wait until you get the, uh the red and black deck for the Chupacabras. Uh, man, it's fun. It's, it's like just sending a bunch of zombies at somebody is pretty satisfying. And I almost got my quest done on top of it. Alright, let's see what we got going on here. 
And that was a better shuffle than I was getting yesterday, too. Was, man, those were, those were some tough games. Ooh, this will work. This will work. So I'm going to drop my Doom to center first. And hopefully somebody kills it. And then the Death Baron to try and get that. Uh, what would be a 3-3? Three, three. And even if he doesn't die, I'll plunder. I will plunder him. And I can even murder somebody. Is this Merfolks? Nobody's playing green-blue if it's not Merfolks, right? Here comes a, a River Sneak. Or, or just a forest. Ha ha! Ha! Do it. <clears throat> and center. Can't block anyway. What's coming down next? The Silver Gill Adept. Now, if it's a Merfolk Mistbinder. Ha! I think I go ahead and murder the river sneak at this point. All right. Well, I'm gonna wait till he puts that counter on. Which will give me mm, this is this is great. This is terrific. So I'm gonna drop my skeleton. Hit him for one, because I'm telling you, they never block a doom descendant. They never block him. Okay, so he's going to 2-2, two, a 3-3 two, two, three, three this turn. I can Chupacabra. Oh, he put on the Silver Gill? That's a terrible choice. Why would you do that? And there's no point in blocking. I don't... I'll take 5. I'm, I'm going to race. Or I'm going to use my removal. Well, okay. No, no, no. So there was a couple of pretty good misplays there for me, which I appreciate. I'm going to go ahead and Chupacabra the Kumina. That's a great card for this guy to have. And it's holding priority for him because he can tap a merfolk he controls and make him unblockable. Alright, and I'm going to save save those guys for blockers of this silver gun. I'm trying to get him killed. Hopefully he attacks me with something other than this river sneak. It's a two two. Yeah, return. I'm really he made this not as much of a threat, so now I'm not all that worried about it. Although sleep is still a factor, so if he sl starts sleeping, my dudes, I'll not be very happy. How much are we taking? Two. Okay, well, I'm home for sure. perfect. He may be running some dive downs, but I'm still gonna gang block here. Let's see what he's got. And this is no risk to me. I want this doomed dissenter dead, anyways. And reassembling skeleton will just reassemble himself. Yeah, he's got some sort of protection. The good old boon, okay. I'm really not sure what this guy is doing here. But okay. Let's just start murdering my dudes. And I'll get my tap skeleton back out there. I'm not ready to draw cards just yet, and I don't want to attack. I do want to. I may have to take three more here before I get the murder down. I'll murder him. Yeah, okay, I see what he's doing. So he's saving all his counters for Herald of Secret Streams. Yeah, this, this isn't great. So we may have to murder the Herald, risk taking two next turn. Alright, let's do that. Otherwise this game's over. 
merfolks are greater than zombies, apparently. Which, I would agree with that a little bit, depending on what he draws into here. This, If this is a sleep, or even a tempest caller, the game's over. He got one up on me. Okay, I like this. This is fine with me. And then before damage happens, I will sacrifice my dude and draw some cards. I don't have enough to do anything about that though, do I? Okay. I really need to get my Dead, and then grave digger him. No, okay, there we go. There's his tempest caller. That's gonna end the game right there, unless I can thin this herd a little bit. Hmm. Total of eight mana to make that happen. Not, not gonna do it. All right. Well. Let's get that skeleton out just for fun. And we already know the game is going to be over, so our opponent wins this one. The Tempest Caller would come down, tap all my creatures, and he would just freely attack, and I'm already at two, so it doesn't always play out. Sometimes you've got to get in there faster. What really would have come in handy that game is my uh, one of my harpies, because they would fly over all of his more folks. I could make them bigger and bigger and bigger, and he would not have had a single answer for the harpy. I could wait. I could hold my... Uh, my reassembling skeleton uses a blocker, sacked with heartbeats, a fabulous combo. Let's see if we can pull that one off in this game. <laughs> Unless we're eh, this you know, if we're playing against a super aggro deck, this would not go well. Oh, this is too slow of a hand. I'm gonna have to mulligan. Better. Yes. Oh yes. Terrific. No diagram ghoul, that would have been good, but that's okay. Another white and a black deck. This looks like it's gonna be a life game, a Johnny cat system deck. Oh boy, if we get stuck at two swamps, man, what are the odds? I would not be thrilled with that idea. Of course, if he starts playing like Resplendent Angels and, and uh, Leon and War Leaders. Man. Well, this isn't great. What do you think he's got? It's holding priority for something. Seal away? Maybe he could have a murder cast down? Johnny's welcome, man. My harpy's gonna get controlled out of my hand. He's got something. Oh, it's Fountain of Renewal. Three, three in a sacket to draw a card. That's that might be what it's doing. Boy. Unbelievable. We need just one, one swamp. I would love for him to waste a seal away on one of my ghouls. We can we can make these trades all day long here. He's gonna one of us is gonna have to draw into something. I need land, he might need creatures. This is ridiculous. He could take this damage all day long. No reason not to. These all these guys all have life links. So we'll be at 21 if he just attacks with them. Or higher, or more than that. I really need a swamp. 
the swamp would do ever so nicely right now. May as well block them, take less damage. Oh boy. Okay, we're gonna costly plunder my descendant. Get the 2 2 token. Draw into a swamp. Play it. And wait. Can't afford to attack because I need the blockers. Of course. All right. And the first card out is a champion of dust. Here it comes. Draws himself seven cards. <laughs> Terrific. So in, in this game, the vampires are going to overrun the zombies. How convenient is that going to be? So the first game went to us. We took the vampires, merfolks over zombies, which isn't always the case for merfolks either. They're, I mean, if you get slowed down a little bit, those merfolks get to be kind of tough to play sometimes. I'm going to have to block. He's going to gain life. And then he's going to just bludgeon me to death with his big, fat vampires. There we go. Mm-hmm. All right, I'd like to have the blocker out. It's Chupacabra, his Twilight Blocker. He was able to draw way too many cards, or else I'd have more of a handle in this game. Let's see what amazing creatures he comes out with this turn. Another call to the feast. That's, that's going to make this tough. Let's see, if we, let's see if we can't get his pride mid up to 20. 10, 11, 12, 13. No life link here. No life link here. If I murder the pride mate, I'm still dead. I can't bring a skeleton back and block with it because it's tapped. I don't mind murdering that pride mate. That this is how a lot of my games went yesterday too, where it's just it's just two mana for four turns and you can't do much and it's a little frustrating, but that's how this game goes sometimes. You just gotta deal with it. No, I moved everything. Bring it all down. I got nothing. Totally fine with this. Let's do it. That seals that up. Can't win them all. But this deck's kind of fun. It would work better if you put uh, a couple more Death Barons in it. Or if you have, you know, if you pulled a few other, uh, like some of the black creatures, I think uh, there's a demon that works out pretty good. I forget what it's called. Uh, Let's take a quick look. It might work out a little bit better. A Demon of Catastrophes. So it's a forecasting 6-6 six, six Flying Trample. If you snuck four of these in this deck also, instead of like maybe the Infectious Horde and Josu and one of the other cards, maybe like the Macabre Waltz, this would certainly be a better addition to the deck because it's a fat, beefy demon creature. Um, I just I only have one, and so one doesn't do me much good. Uh, you know, if you, you want to sneak those in there or spend some rares on it. Uh, but again, I'm saving up my rare or my gold, so I'm not using uh, wild cards. I have a plan for my wild card. I have a plan for my gold, or else I'd buy packs and get wild cards and, and mix it all up. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, I will do more videos just like this one, and then I'll do the big pack opening here pretty soon. Thanks for watching.